First giving all praises to the master of the universe, the creator of the heavens and the earth. There is only one creator of all that is in existence. I thank the master of the universe, the divine, for his presence in my life and prayerfully in your life and what he is calling on us in this hour. I thank the master of the universe for blessing us with all of those that have walked the line of divine. I thank him for Abraham, Abraham, Ibrahim. I thank him for Isaac and Jacob, Israel. I thank him for all the heroes and sheroes. I give him honor and praise for allowing me to just breathe for another second, seeking his redemption and his forgiveness. I want to greet you in the only greeting that the patriots and our foremothers and forefathers knew and those who uh, practice islam that may be listening you say peace be unto you and in arabic is is aslam alaikum those that believe in christendom you say grace and peace or praise the lord and the yehudim uh, that believe in the God of Israel. Shalom Aleichem, peace be unto you and to all others, peace. This will be part two in connection with Tishava and Shiva and the sacredness of the time that we are in right now. We are in the middle of the day, the sixth day of Elu. Now, yesterday I said it was the sixth day, but it was the fifth day, but we were close to the sixth, the beginning of the sixth day, which started at sundown last night, and it would end at sundown tonight in a, in a few hours, and then we will come into the seventh day. And so there will be another part three that will be released um, after sundown for the seventh day uh, because the seventh day will mark one week of Moses, Moshe, Musa being in the mountain for 40 days. And the significance of this is this is a very sacred and holy time. So you please listen to part one um, and you will find out even more. But I want to uh, let's share with you that you have to understand on the 40th day that Moses Moshe came down from the mountain on Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. And this year starts on the eve of Sunday, September the 27th, and end on Monday, September the 28th at sundown. Between that time, we have Rosh Hashanah, which starts on Friday, September the 18th to Sunday, September the 20th. Allow me to share something with you because most of you may not be aware of this. And why is Rosh Hashanah, Shana is so important? And why is it so sacred? And why the master of the universe chose this particular time? of these 40 days and why it is so significant in this particular time because so many of us are unaware we you know we say we claim that we study torah but as i often say you have to study until your teeth break huh because my people are destroyed huh the holy writing says that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge Huh? But why is Rosh Hashanah uh, much more important than most of you are aware of? Listen to me. Rosh Hashanah huh, 
is the day when Adam and Eve huh, were created. Huh? So Rosh Hashanah, when you look at this year on February the 18th, September the 18th, I mean Friday, September the 18th to Sunday, September the 29th, you must understand that it is the day when Adam and Eve were created or in essence and essentially born huh, to this world. Huh? They were born to this world. So you need to make it clear. So it needs to be made clear in your business and understanding the Torah and the sacred writings is that the master of the universe created Adam and Eve on the day of Rosh Hashanah. So that's why it is also so important in the sacred time because it's the same time during this same 40 days that the master of the universe had commanded Moshe to come back up to the mountain. Huh? He said, I want to see you. So come back up here. Hmm. But we're going to get to that in a second. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. Moshe went up the mountain on the first of the month of Elu. Now, I want to, I don't want to, I want to keep it simple for you. So, um, I would, the Elu starts in the middle or towards the third week of, uh, of, of August uh, to the second or so week in September. So the Hebrew calendar is different from the calendar that you look at Monday, to, I mean, January, February, March, April, May, whatever. So what I'm going to do is, to, in order to not confuse you, I will just give you the time frame that you can relate to best. So elude is from the middle of August to the middle of September. So you have that kind of visual. Okay. And came down 40 days later on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, which this year will fall on Sunday, September the 5th, 27th to September the 28th. All right. The Torah speaks about the 40 days in the 10th chapter, in the 10th verse in Deuteronomy. And it reads on this wise, I have stayed on the mountain huh, as I did the first time. So this is his second time. Some people get it confused and think that Moses Moshe only went up to the mountain one time. No, for 40 days. He went up to the mountain twice. So sometimes people get confused about that. So th this is the second time of going, being commanded. We're going to go on. So in Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, and the 10th verse reads on this wise. I had stayed on the mountain as I did the first time. 40 days and 40 nights. And Hashem the Lord heed me once again. And Hashem the Lord agreed not to destroy you, the children of Israel. Huh? So the sacred writings say here is, is, trans, is a translation. He, Moshe, would return to the camp. After the divine spoke with him. Huh? Moshe will return to the camp and teach the elders what he had learned. Hmm? Moshe conducted himself in the way from Yom Kippur huh, until the tabernacle was erected. Huh? So it took some months to build the tabernacle. So, you, so you're looking at about from... The middle of August to the middle of September was the was the month of the Lord when he started till the middle of June to the middle of July. Huh? This month is best known as the month of the sin. Huh? So it the, the, the sin of the golden calf, which resulted in Moshe, Mos, Moses, Musa breaking the ten words because they wasn't called the Ten Commandments. They were called the ten words. So breaking the actual 10 words, huh? but it happened during the month, the Hebrew month that falls between June and July. So somewhere in between the middle of June or so to the middle of July, this was the month when, this is when the occurrence took place of the golden calf. Huh? 
So we are looking at about 10 months to erect the tabernacle. Huh? So for, for on the seventh month, huh, which falls between June and July, the seventh he, the Hebrew seventh month, which, which falls between June and July, the, tab, the tablets were broken. And on the 18th of that month, the 18th day of that month, Moshe burnt the calf and judged the sinners. Huh? So the master of the universe actually burnt it and judged the sinners. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. You know, the reason why I'm keeping it as simple as possible because you get some folks, I just have to be very honest. I mean, poor fellas, poor fellas. Poor fellas, they don't study to nothing. They think they know what they're studying. They think they know what they're talking about. But you got to study until your teeth break. So you got folks that will listen even to my message and try to find one little thing wrong. Just try to find something, something wrong. But they don't study in here, 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 hear what the brother is saying. Huh? So he says here, and on the 19th, Huh? Of the month, of the Hebrew month, between June and July, he went up to Mount Sinai. That was on the 19th day. As it said, it came, it came to pass on the next day that Moshe, Moses, Musa, said to the people in Exodus, huh? The 32nd chapter and the 30th verse. Read it. You have been guilty of a great sin. Yet I will now go up to Hashem, the Lord. Perhaps I may win forgiveness for your sins. He spent 40 days there and begged for mercy. Huh? As it said, and I cast myself down before Hashem, the Lord. You find that in Deuteronomy, the ninth chapter in the 18th verse. Read on this wise. I threw myself down. Before Hashem, the Lord, eating no bread and drinking no water 40 days and 40 nights. As before. See, so this is the second time. So he did the same thing, but this time he threw himself down before Hashem. As before. Because of the great wrong you had committed doing what displeased Hashem, the Lord, and vexing him. You find those words again in Deuteronomy, the ninth chapter, in the 18th verse. On the beginning of the new month, huh, of Elul, it was said to him, huh, it was said to him this. It said, and in the morning, you shall ascend. That means you bet you call, remember that's the year, to Mount Sinai. At the end in the beginning of the morning, you need to get your tail up here on this mountain to me, partner. I got some words for you. Huh? You find this in Exodus, the 31st chapter, the first to the second verse, to receive the second tablets. And he spent 40 days there, reading on his wise. Exodus, the 31st chapter, the first to the second verse, and it reads on his wise. The Hashem said to Moshe, Moses, Musa, Carve two tablets of the stone like the first. Huh? So he told him to carve two more tablets. Go ahead, carve two more. Huh? Like you did the first. And I will inscribe upon the tablets mm, the words. Mm, these are the ten words here. The words that were on the first tablets, which you shattered. Huh? Be ready by morning. And in the morning come up to Mount Sinai and present yourself there to me on top of the mountain. So the master of the universe said, get it ready and be ready in the morning huh, to bring yourself up on Mount Sinai to me. This is the master of the universe, the divine talking. Moshe was praying hard for what he called a stiff-necked people, huh, a rebellious people, huh, and it is said concerning them, I and I remain upon the mountain just as the first days of Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter and the 10th verse. And it said, I, Moshe, has stayed on the mountain as I did the first time, 40 days and 40 nights. And Hashem, 
Hashem, the Lord, heed me once again. The Hashem, the Lord, agreed not to destroy you. Just as the first one days were with good with the seventh of the, the Hebrew month that falls between May and June. Huh? The seventh day. The 17th. And then, and to the 17th. Oh, it fell between. It, it's, it's, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Just as the first one days were with good. Will from the seventh of the month. The Hebrew month between May and June. To the 17th of the Hebrew month from June to July. So were the last one days will be good. Huh? We may deduce, we may reduce from this that the intermediate ones were with the wrath. On the, on the 10th of the month of September to October. Now, let me put it like this. Okay. So with the last ones, with goodwill. Huh? So what the master universe is saying, okay, these last ones will have goodwill. We may deduct from this that the intermediate ones were with wrath. On the 10th of the Hebrew month of September to October, the Holy One, blessed be he, was a please to Israel joyfully and wholeheartedly. Okay, he was he was he was pleased with him then, huh? Because when Moshe, Moshe came, you know, things was happening, building a tabernacle, you know, it, when I had this experience, the stick neck people, okay, and he said to Moshe, I have forgiven as you have spoken. He the divine, the master of the universe, gave over to him the second tablets. Because the master of the universe is merciful. So now he say, I have forgiven, huh? Because as you have spoken, this was because of the prayers that Moshe was doing for the sins of the children of Israel up on the mountain for the second time, for the second time, partner, huh? And he, Moshe, Moses, Musa descended and he, the divine, begun commanding him concerning the work of the tabernacle. They constructed it until the first of the Hebrew month that falls between March and April. Huh? And once it was erected, he no longer spoke with him except from the tent of meeting. Now, we need to understand that the Torah is not to be taken in a physical or literal manner. The Torah is only to be read and taken from a spiritual and mental. It's not to be taken from a physical and literally. The, the Torah and the Tanaka is only to be read spiritually and mental. Huh? It's not a history book. Or a fairy tale book. Humpty Dumpty. It ain't that kind of book, partner. Snow White. It ain't that kind of book. Huh? So it's not a history book. Or a fairy tale. This English language is so misleading in one's perception. My Abu, my Sharif, always say words and languages make minds. Huh? Words and languages make mine. Since the Torah does tell over many stories, it can easily be misconstructed as a history book. Even though these stories certainly took place, there are many details, laws, and lessons huh, that one within the Tanakh huh, that are the source of guiding our way mm, of life according to to the will of the master of the universe. Huh? So it's to guide your life. The Torah is to guide your life, man, towards the will of the master of the universe through thought, speech, and action. Huh? Literally, it means laws, 
Bible is just an English way of referring to the book. But the proper way mm, to refer to it is, 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 is how the Torah calls it. The Torah Moshe. Huh? Torah Moshe. Huh? Or the Torah. That's how the Torah refers to it. I don't refer to it as a Bible or a book or a history book. Uh-uh. That's not what it is. And that's what people are so caught up in the physical stuff and taking things literally that they are so out of step to, to with the will huh, of the master of the universe. Thought, speech, and action. Huh? Here's what, check out what Google gives for the meaning of Torah. Now you Google it. The word Torah in Hebrew, it derives from the root and said it in conjunction means to guide, to teach. As you read in Leviticus, the 10th chapter and 11th verse. The meaning of the word is therefore teaching or instructions. Huh? The commonly accepted law gives a wrong impression that it's a book. Leviticus 10, 11 says, and you must teach the Israelites all the laws, the instructions, the guidance, the precepts, which he Hashem has imparted to them through Moshe, Moses, Musa. Huh? I left off in part one in the explanation, and we're going to talk about and get to this evening, the, the principles. There's 20 20 principles that I must share with you about Tishiva and Shiva. There's 20 principles I must share with you about the whole repentance and redemption and seeking the forgiveness in this hour. This is a very sacred time over the next 40, the remaining 35, 34 days of, of, this, uh, of, of this process leading up to not only Rosh Hashanah, but then also leading up to the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Huh? So you have to have that clear understanding. It states in Jeremiah, the third chapter, in the 22nd verse, Turn back, O rebellious children. I will heal your affliction. Huh? So the master of the universe is saying, Turn back, O rebellious children. I will heal your affliction. We are warned about repentance all throughout the Torah and the Tanaka and the sacred writings. Huh? It is explained that repentance is accepted even when the sinner repents because of his many troubles. Huh? How much more so will it be accepted if he returns because of the fear or the love of Elohim, the divine? As it states in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter in the 30th verse, when you are in distress, mm, because all these things have befallen you, and in the end, mm, return to the Lord Hashem, your Elohim, and obey him. It is explained in the Torah that the divine will help those who repent beyond what their natural abilities would allow. Huh? And that he renews a pure spirit within them to reach great heights in his love. Huh? As it stated in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, I hope y'all writing these down, the 30th chapter in the second verse, reading on this wise, and you return to Hashem the Lord, your divine, and you and your children healed his command with all your heart and all of your soul. Mm. Just as I enjoy upon, upon you this day. Huh? Further it states about the body of the matter. And you can read on in Deuteronomy 30th chapter in the 6th verse. Then Hashem, the Lord your divine, the master of the universe, will circumcise your heart mm, and the hearts of your offsprings to acquire love for him. And the prophets and the writers constantly speak 
on the subject of repentance. Huh? Such that the principles of repentance are all explained in their words as we, as we will explain even further. Huh? So we need to understand the value, you know, of repentance and redemption. And then it's a sacred time now because it's, it's known that over these 40 days that the master of the universe, according to the sacred writings, he's, he's more receptive. He's, he's all open. He's listening. He's seeking. Huh? Those that really want to seek repentance and redemption, you got to pray now. You got to study. That's why you got to read in these 40 days all 150 chapters of the book of Psalms. And then on Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, you got to read it all 150 also. So you need to get started, partner. So you can get your first 150 in and then by Rosh Hashanah, you can start reading the next set of 150 because you got to read it three. You got to read these 300 chapters. That means you got to read the whole book of songs twice between now and the end of the day of atonement. Huh? So let's stay with me for a second here. Huh? Know that the punishment for the sinner who delays repenting of his sin will grow much heavier for him every day. For he knows that Elohim, the master of the universe, wrath, has gone far forth against him. Did you hear what I just said? For he knows that Elohim, wrath, has gone forth against him and that he has an escape route from it. Huh? The escape being repentance. That's the only way you can... Man, you can listen. You look at this wicked world, and Zora said that 99% uh, of this present world is under a deception and a lie. Two thirds of the world's population that's here now won't be a part of the world to come. The world of absolute, governed by the absolute truth, in the presence of the High Mashiach. And in the presence of the High Mashiach, no sin will exist anymore. Huh? But it says that the only escape route. From the judgment that is on us. And it's written in certain circuit, sacred writings that if the master of the universe was to judge all the people on the earth, there would be no one left for him to judge. So the only route, escape route, brother, out of this penitent, out of this penitentiary, out of this belly of the beast, is through repentance. Huh? Repentance to remove the evil inclinations that is housed in the flesh. Mm. Mm. So the only escape route is repentance, redemption, and seeking forgiveness. Yes, he still remains rebellious and still stays within his evil. That's what's happening today. If this don't fit your narrative, if it doesn't fit one of the uh, 80,000 different religions after the master of the universe gave Moshe the tablet or gave him the 10 words and the commandments, and then after that experience in the 40 years in the desert, then you got the creation of 80,000 different religions. 80,000, partner. And Christendom alone, you got over 20,000 different doctrines. You got over 10,000 different religions and cults and camps in America alone. That's a ball of confusion. You got to return back to the God of Israel, Baruch Hashem. You got to. And you got to study to your teeth break. Huh? So it says here that the only escape route huh, is through repentance. Yet he still remains rebellious and stays within this evil, his own evil. Huh? Even though it is within his power to leave from within the disorder, he does not fear the anger nor the rage. Huh? Thus, his evil is great. Man, it's a sad state to be in. Huh? But delay of repentance is only found among the ignorant. Huh? The master of the universe called him, he says in the, in the sacred writings, and I think it's also in the book of Proverbs, you stupid people, you brainless people, Stiff necked people who are sleeping, lodging, huh? 
Proverbs says, study the end. They do not turn to their hearts and they have neither the knowledge nor the understanding to know that they should hurry to escape huh, for their lives. Some of them are led astray from the master of the universe, blessed be he, and they do not believe in the punishment for their sins. And our elders say in the sacred writings, may they be... May their memory be blessed. Huh? The Kohen, the, the rabbis and the rabbis. Huh? Says in the sacred writers. Why saying in the sacred writers? If you saw a scholar transgress a prohibition at night. Huh? Do not think badly of him the next day. For in truth, he has already repented. Huh? And furthermore, reflect upon the evil of the one who delays repenting as it is great. For if, for if it were not that we had delayed, now when his impulse would confront him, that's that old habit, that old behavior, that drunkenness, that lying, that stealing, that conniving, huh? violating the neighbor, confront him a second time and he has the opportunity to sin. He will recall and cite with a bitter heart, with anguish and worry, and his eyes will weep with grief. He will then subdue his impulse. That means you got to subdue, huh? You got to subdue that beast, that evil inclination in you, that ego-driven evil inclination. And remember that the cup of bitterness had passed over him once, and he would not drink it again. As it stated in Psalms, the fourth chapter in the eighth verse, reading on this wise, tremble and do not sin. Its explanation is tremble and fear and be troubled mm, about your sinning and do not sin again. For it's mentioned their sin above. Huh? When it states in Psalms four and three, you sought falsehood, Selah. Huh? And it's using the exp exp uh, explanation, expression, I would say, they're using the expression, tremble confirms this explanation. Huh? In Genesis 45 and 24, write this down. Do not tremble along the way. Tremble along the way, excuse me. And in Habakkuk, it says in our Bible, the third chapter in the 16th verse, I tremble where I stood. I tremble. Oh, ooh. huh? And their meaning is distress as something that passed and is still present. So the, the thought of sending, the thought of violating the master of the universe. The idea and the thought that just come into your mind, man, you have over 60,000 thoughts that come through the human mind each and every day. So you got to control your thoughts. Mm. You got to be strong enough to rebuke the thoughts of error, the thoughts of sin. Mm. Man, this is real right here. Huh? Because what's the weight of a thought? Look at the outcome. From where the thought originated. What's the weight of the thought? You're doing 40 years. You're doing life in prison, partner. For a thought, let me go rob this person. Or I'm going to go and shoot this joke because he stepped on my sneakers. Or he said something out of line to my lady. What's the weight of the thought? That 40 years or that life you're doing in prison. Huh? What's the weight of the thought, partner? Your baby calling you and want to see you, brother. But you ain't got time for your child. What's the weight of the thought? You want to hang in the street. What's the weight of the thought, brother, when you don't bring that money home to pay them bills and put food? A man is judged by how well he maintains and provides for his family. That's how a man is judged, partner. So what's the weight of a thought? So here it says, so when you look at the weight of the thought, it causes you to tremble. 
Huh? Because why? If, the, if, if you're trembling because if the thought is not in line with the frequencies huh, of his ways and his thoughts. Not your way and your thoughts. The sacred writer said your ways are not mine and your thoughts are not mine. So, you're, so you tremble when you come into the master of the universe huh, on that kind of frequency, brother and sister. So therefore, you want to line yourself up so thought, speech, and action is all tied mm, to the master of the universe. So your soul, your net fish, brother, is reigning and ruling, partner. Huh? So it goes on and says here, huh? It says here, and their meaning is distress as something that that passed and is still present. And it did not and it did not state, it did not state in Psalms, fear or flinch. But when he delays from repenting, when the sin comes to his hands, he will fail, he will fall into the trap like he fell at first. So, brother, you got to understand, you can't just let anything come into your, into your circumference. You can't let anything fall into your hands. Otherwise, you're going to subject yourself, subjugate yourself to sinning again. Huh? And the second inquiry will be very great, and his evil will rise up in front of the master of the universe. Now, do you want to face that? Hmm? For at first, he did not think that the stealing impulse would come upon him again. The lion, huh? the treachery, the deceit, the alcohol, the drugs, huh? the fornication, the adultery. Huh? Mm. But after he saw the weakness of his power, and that his impulse had overcome him. And that it is more powerful than he. He, he should have seen that it is uncontrolled. And he should have sought to increase his fear of the most high. In the book of Proverbs it says that the, the beginning of knowledge is the fear. Huh? Of the master of the universe. I think it's Proverbs, the first chapter in the seventh verse. Huh? So that's the beginning of the knowledge is the fear of the master of the universe. Huh? To bring down his fright, his fright upon his soul, his freight upon his soul, to save it from the ambush of his impulses of to sin and to protect it from his inequities. So therefore, you got to seek the master of the universe. You got to keep the master of the universe in front of you, man. You can never afford to be disconnected. Huh? So, you know, it's like your phone. You leave it out long enough and leave it on, it's going to need to be charged. But some of us will say, well, man, you, need to, you can't keep your battery charged. But one thing you can stay charged to, huh, is the frequency, huh, that will connect you to the world of absolute. You coming from the world, well, at the bottom, you got the world of action, huh? Then you got the world of formation, huh? These are the steps. Then you got the world of creation, huh? And then you come to the world of absolute, governed by the absolute truth. And that is what you need to surround yourself and protect your soul through the seven gates, huh? Anytime you, anytime you disconnect from the master of the universe, you're in trouble. You, 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 you're not strong enough, man. Mm. And King Solomon, peace be unto him, said in Proverbs, the 26th chapter, the 11th verse, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool repents mm, his folly. And the explanation is that a dog eats disgusting things. Huh? But when he vomits them, they are more disgusting. Yet he returns to eat them. Huh? Such is the manner of a fool. This is from Solomon, King Solomon, man. For he will do a disgraceful act. But when he repeats it, it is even more disgraceful, disgraceful, as we explain. 
So you keep repeating the same sin. Man, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Huh? The penalty is going to get worse and worse. Mm -mm -mm. Additionally, repentance is more difficult for one who repents, who repeats his sin. For the sin becomes as if it was permitted uh, to him. And his sin is very wealthy, wealthy with regards to this, as it states in Jeremiah, the third chapter, in the fifth verse. That is how you spoke. You did wrong and you were able. The meaning of you were able in Jeremiah, the third chapter, in the fifth verse, is that the evil deeds have become like that which is permitted to you. So now the evil deeds and, and being able to commit sin is like a learned behavior for you now. Huh? It's like a learned behavior for you now. And like something within your ability and your authority. Huh? Like the usage in Deuteronomy, the, the 12th chapter and the 17th verse. You are not able to eat in your gates. For which the translation of is, you do not have authority. And our elders, huh? Our elders, you know, our elders, our, the, 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 the profound rabbis and Kohens and the rabbis that we have, may their memory be blessed, said, where's a person commits a transgression and repeats it? Mm. It is it becomes to him as if it were permitted. That means you're doing it like you got authority to sin. You're not looking at what the punishment is going to be afterwards. You're doing it like you got authority to sin. And so our elders write in the sacred writings and made their memories be blessed said about a man who commits a transgression and repeats it that from now on, if he thinks about doing that sin, but is prevented from doing it by distress. His bad thought is joined with the act. It is counted as if he did it. Huh? And about him in Jeremiah, you go back to Jeremiah, the sixth chapter in the 19th verse. And the reason is why I am going to bring disaster upon his, this people and the outcome of their own thoughts. The outcome of their own thoughts. I'm telling you, man, this whole book is spiritual and mental. I'm asking you, you don't care when you got a long beard and how you dress up, partner. He told, he told first Samuel, he told Samuel that in first Samuel. See, man looks at the outward appearance. I look at the heart. Huh? Your thoughts, huh? Thoughts, speech, and action. Your ways and your thoughts are not mine, huh? And now understand, listen to this, for it is a great principle, huh? It is true that there are righteous people who sometimes stumble into sin, like the matter that is stated in uh, Ecclesiastics. Uh, the seventh chapter in the 20th verse. For there is no man that is righteous on earth who does good and does not sin. I'll repeat that again. There is no man that is righteous on earth who, who does good and does not sin. That's in Ecclesiastics, the seventh chapter in the 20th verse. However, they conquer their impulses from in front of them. And if they do fall to sin once, they will not repeat it. Huh? Rather, they will have it taken away from in front of them and repent. However, anyone who is mm, not careful of a particular sin mm, does not take upon himself to guard against it. Even if it's from the light ones, and even though he guards himself against all of the other transgressions of the Torah, the sages, our elders of Israel, call habitual sinner about one thing he is counted with 
the sinners and his sin is too great to bear. That's the habitual sinner. Huh? Man, I know, I, you know, you know some folks, you call man, that joker right there, that man, man right there, right there, that one right there, he ain't a bitch, he's a habitual liar. Huh? Because he just got lies coming out of his mouth, no matter what it is, he just lying. Just lying, 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 lying. Huh? For certain, if a slave said to his master, I will do everything you tell me except for one thing. He has always broken his master's yoke, huh? From upon himself and asked, do what is proper in his own eyes. And in his whole matter, he stated in Deuteronomy, the 27th chapter, in the 20, 26th verse. Curse be he who will not uphold the words of this Torah to do them. So if you ain't holding up, if you ain't holding up the Torah, the master of the universe said, curse be he who will not uphold the words of this Torah to do them. Your words must be your bond. That bond must be based upon the divine and within the oneness of the divine. Thought, speech, and action must be in direct line to the world of absolute governed by the absolute truth. Huh? The explanation of the matter is that he does not accept upon himself to fulfill all of the words of the Torah from the beginning to the end. So you got, if you don't accept that upon yourself, you got a problem, partner. You questioning the Torah and the Tanakh and the sacred writings. Who are you? Huh? Furthermore, huh? Know that one. No, I'm skipping ahead. Son. And what indicates this? Who will not uphold to do? That's the question. Who will not uphold to do? And it did not state. Who will not do them? He's saying, who will not uphold to do? Mm. Furthermore, know that one who repeats one sin 10 times, even though he guards himself against all the other transgressions, but he repeats the sin 10 times, is surely considered as he has transgressed different transgressions and so did our elders say may their memories be blessed huh in the sacred writings that if they tell of the nazarets huh do not drink wine and he drinks do not drink and he drinks at the end he lashes he lashed for each and every time huh like one who eats a a terminally sick animal, huh? An impure animal, forbidden flat fat and blood. Let me say this about the Nazarites. They are, or they were of the Israelites uh, who, who were basically consecrated to the service of the master of the universe under vows to abstain from alcohol. Huh? They let their hair grow. They let their hair grow. And they avoid uh, the defilement by contact with corpse. And you find that in the book of Numbers in the sixth chapter. So it was very sacred individuals. So, and we have surely seen that the inequities of the generation have increased on accounts of this. You look at these, look, 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 at, look at today. You look at your kids even, you're like, is that my child? Or you look at the people in your community and be like, who are these people? Where these people come from? There's no more morality. There's no, they're not God-fearing. Huh? They do not fear the master of the universe. They do not fear committing sin. They do not fear abomination. 
They don't have no fear. I mean, these people trying to remove the holy scriptures from everywhere. Huh? They, they make a lie to look like a truth and the truth to look like a lie. And they do not guard themselves against them all the days of their life. But these sins are rather like something permitted to them. And if they were only behaving like this with one sin, it would have been a bad disease upon their souls as we explain. So now today we have come to that deception and the whole world is being deceived under this deception. Huh? So this is written for what? So that spiritually and mentally, huh? And all the more when they behave so with many negative commandments, including the wealthy ones, such as unnecessary oaths, cursing one's fellow or oneself with the divine's name, mentioning the master of the universe name unnecessarily in an impulse place or with unclean hands, diverting one's eyes from the poor. Huh? That's what's happening with these preachers and these imams and these, these, some of these rabbis and, and these elders and these apostles. They have di diverted their eyes from the poor. They have diverted the tithes and the offerings and the first fruits mm, from the poor. They have diverted it and put it into their institutions so that they can develop wealth for themselves. So they have diverted what the Torah say it is for the tithes and the offerings and the first fruit is for the poor. So it's supposed to be given directly and solely and only to the poor. It's not going to the needy, it's just going to these greedy ones. Huh? So what he's saying here is these curses Huh? Diverted one eyes from the poor, their evil speech, their baseless hatred and pride and terrorizing others, starting at those sexually forbidden acts. And the neglect of Torah is equal to them all together. So you neglect in Torah. And there are many like this. We have written some of them for the people of the generations to remind them and to warn them. And likewise, is it fitting for all repentance to write in the scroll book mm, the things that they have stumbled upon? Hmm? You got to write it down. Write down your sins every day. Write down your good deeds every day. Write down your sins every day. Huh? And the commandments in which their performance has fallen short. When you write it down, you're going to see that you have fallen short of the glory of the master of the universe. And to read from this book of memories every day to remind yourself what you should not do. Huh? You must create a plan. Huh? Each of us must create a plan in order to reach our destination in repentance and redemption. Huh? This main goal is to kill the ego and become ruled by the soul and the direct e energy, evolution, and expansion from the world of absolute. Remember, there are four worlds. The world of absolute, the world of creation, the world of formation, and the world of action. Our goal or plan should be focused on how to master these four worlds. We need all of the abundance, all of the blessings from the divine. And this is why we must have goals and a plan in order to receive the purity through repentance and redemption. One of the steps that must be applied is meditation. Huh? The prophets of old used to meditate very effectively with meditating. You must isolate yourself 
away from distractions and non essential things. And basically isolate yourself from people, places, and things. Social media, phones, party, and gossip, and etc. So you isolate yourself from any distractions so you can clear your mind and connect your soul to the world of absolute and be able to receive through the sign waves, man, that travel beyond the ceiling of the earth. Mm. Huh? And the absolute truth will come into you. Make a list of the areas in your life that need to be removed. Habits, sins, errors, learned behaviors, characteristic traits that need to be destroyed. Make a list. Mm? And behold that there are many levels of repentance it is true that you will find forgiveness for any repentance however the soul will only find complete purification to be as if the in inequities never had been when a person purifies his heart and prepares his spirit as will be explained and and so it is also written in Psalms, the 30, 32nd chapter and the second verse. And it reads on this wise. Happy is the man who Hashem the Lord does not hold guilty and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Mm. And it is like the latter, it's like the, the matter of, of a garment that needs washing. Huh? A little washing will be effective to remove it's liquid stool. Basically diarrhea. Hmm? However, it will only whiten mm, according to the account of washing. And so it is written there in Psalms, the 51st chapter and the fourth verse. Wash me thoroughly of my iniquities. Hmm. Wash me thoroughly of my sins. Wash me thoroughly of my filth. Wash me thoroughly of my abomination. Wash me thoroughly of my tendencies that is not in your will. Huh? And, and the soul will be washed from the inequities according to how you wash its heart. Mm. As it is stated in Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, in the 14th verse, wash your heart clean of wickedness, O Jerusalem. Listen, Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, in the 14th verse, wash your heart clean of wickedness, O Jerusalem. Huh? And our elders, uh, used to say in the sacred writings, they say in the sacred writings, and may their memories be blessed. May these rabbis, may these elders, may these Kohanes, these teachers, these Melaboots be blessed. And they said, happy is the man who fear, who fear. Mm. Happy is the man who fear. Think about that here. Happy is the man who fear. Mm. Mm. Happy is the man. Mm -mm -mm. Who fears the Lord Hashem. Who? Psalms 112 2. Huh? Psalms 112 2. Happy is the man who fears. Let's think about that for a minute. Happy is the man who fears Hashem the Lord. See, I, I, I just, I can't get past when I hear about fearing him, I can't get past Proverbs, the first chapter and the seventh verse. The fear of the master of the universe is the beginning of all knowledge. So happy is the man who fears the Lord Hashem, Psalms 112 and 1. Huh? When he is still a man, this means, this means to say that a man's elevated repentance of a man is in the days of his youth when he overcomes his impulses when his strength is still with him. Huh? 
So it's saying that you will be even greater when you, if you get it in your youth. If you get it while you're young, brother. Huh? A hard head make a soft behind, partner. Huh? But if you were able to get this understanding in your youth, and you can pull this understanding into you, and you can feel the power of the Ruha, huh? And the master of the universe. When he overcomes his impulses, when his strength is still with him, however, any repentance is effective. As it's stated in the Psalms 90 and 3, write this down. You return man to dust. You said return you mortals. See, this body going to return to dust. Huh? But your spirit, huh? Your soul, your nephew, brother, that has everlasting life. Huh? That has endless life. It's limitless. So you can't, you, this, this body going to go back to where it came from. It's going back to the dust. But if you want everlasting life, if you want lim uh, limitless, you got to straighten up your tacoon. Huh? You got to straighten up your tacoon, partner. Otherwise, you coming back here. And the reason why you back here now is because in your previous existence here, you didn't do certain things right in your tacoon. So now you got to come back. And if you don't get it right this time, you coming back here again, partner. So you got to clean up your tacoon. And you got to rectify the things in your cocoon. But you got to make sure that you got to go through Tishiva. You got to go through the process of Shiva, of repentance, of redemption. Huh? To seek the forgiveness of the master of the universe. Huh? As it's stated in Psalms, the 90th chapter in the 30th verse. In the third verse. 90, 90th chapter in the third verse. You return man to dust. You said. Return you mortals. And our elders... Huh? May their memory be blessed. Have said until the soul turns to dust. Until the soul turns to dust. I want to thank you for this opportunity to be before you in this critical hour. You can go to my YouTube channel or my Facebook page and you can see some of the previous lectures, but uh, we I will be coming back at sundown tonight with another message that will start to break down the 20th principles. I'm going to take my time with it. So um, I may take me three lectures to just break down all of the 20th in stages. But we will see Baruch Hashem how that goes. But I want to thank you for this time and this hour. It is very critical for us, especially if we look at the world today. But I pray that something that I said will carry you far beyond this dispensation of time. Baruch Hashem, I leave you as I came before you um, in the greetings of Shalom Aleichem and peace be unto you. Peace be unto you.